Great. So, uh, well, welcome everyone uh, to SET's Power BI and Sim uh, Simio webinar for May 2020. We would just uh, first like to thank everyone for taking time out of their busy days or, or nights um, to join us for this webinar. Um, today, we're going to give you a little taste in how SET operates, specifically diving into how we use the combination of Simio, the very powerful simulation tool, and Power BI, Microsoft's answer to the business intelligence space. These combined give our clients valuable insights and solutions into their problems they're currently facing. So just before we start, I'd just like to introduce our hosts and pre presenters for today's webinar. First, I'd like to welcome Jakub Boerter, who is the Managing Director of SET, Captain of our ship, and the reason why we're all here today. Welcome, Jakub. Thank you. And then next, we have uh, Hilda Fayun and Nick Finn, two of our employees that have extensive knowledge in both Simio and Power BI. Welcome, Hilda and Nick. Thanks for having us, Marco. How's it, Marco? And, yeah, thank you. And then lastly, we have myself, Marco. I also work for SCT, and I'll be the MC for this webinar. If you look at our agenda today, we'll try to keep everything in a simple, simple and easy to follow flow. We'll do a brief overview of our company, SET, as well as a brief overview of business intelligence, or BI. Then we'll explain how Power BI is used as a business intelligence tool. Spoilers, it's pretty great. Then we'll, instead of just listing the benefits of Power BI, we thought we'd show you a simple use case and then move on to a more in-depth case study that will cover all the bases you've been curious about or not so curious about, but we'll still find and interesting. Last but last least, we will answer some of your questions at the end. So don't worry if you haven't any questions, but for now, until the end of the seminar, you're able to submit them on the team's um, application and our experts will do their very best to answer them. Also, don't forget that if you happen to lose connectivity or you have some prior um, arrangements to attend, do not worry. We will be emailing you a copy of this webinar, uh, a presentation of the pack, as well as the Q&A as well as some bonus material that I'll be explaining later in this webinar. So starting off, we'll just give a brief introduction to SET and business intelligence. So over to Yaku for an overview of our company. Thanks, Yaku. Thank you, Marco. I just want to personally welcome everyone. Thanks for taking the time out to uh, listen to this webinar. I hope you can learn something today. Just very briefly, uh, Simulation Engineering Technologies was established in 2004. Uh, we mainly um, we consist of a team of industrial engineers that all specialize in using simulation, um, more specifically Simio. We have offices in Centurion and also an office in Cape Town in, in South Africa. And we're the largest computer simulation company in, in South Africa and have been a Simio premier partner since 2008. Uh, we specialize in Simio and Power BI training, uh, as well as consulting, mainly in the mining, ports and rail, warehouse, logistics, and manufacturing industries. Um, the slide you're looking at now is, is really where we've done a lot of projects. Um, as you can see, we do a lot of work internationally, and we've completed over 270 projects in 20 countries. Um, yeah. That's basically from me, a quick intro. Thank you very much. Great. So um, show of hands, well, I, I guess I can't really see everyone, um, but for the sake of this presentation, let's just uh, pretend. Um, just about um, saying how many people watching this webinar have ever been presented with a spreadsheet or presentation that looks similar to this? Data can be overwhelming. And to some, lots of data is amazing. I mean, the more data, the better, right? But of quite often the case, that's not really true. Sometimes it can be too overwhelming for the people making use of the information, and we'll soon see this later in the webinar. So if we have a look at this uh, quite a look, sweet looking spreadsheet over here, let's try to imagine and easily see what's, try and see what's going on here. It's a bit too, it's a bit like taking a drink from the water from a fire hose. It's not that easy. Consultants and project owners often have a common problem. All the information is there, but how do we get value from it? Yes, spreadsheets like this one here have helped and quite usually they're the backbone of any organization. 
And why is that? Well, quite often it's something that we're used to. We often find comfort in these rows and rows of information. However, business intelligence has given us an opportunity to dig deeper into those spreadsheets and give us some valuable insight. So next up is Hilda to explain this uh, in a bit more detail. Thank you, Hilda. Thanks, Marco. All right, so if we just start off with the term business intelligence or BI for short, uh, is certainly making the rounds in this day and age. With such a great presence, BI is interpreted in many unique ways, but they all ultimately come down to the same point. Simply put, BI refers to the presentation of organized data in such a way that allows people and entire organizations to make more um, informed decisions. With the ever increasing presence of technology in today's corporate and personal world, data generation is always happening everywhere, all around us. With the importance of data growing by the day, the practice of BI are consistently evolving to keep up with the sheer volume of data being generated by the world. Think about companies like Amazon with 1.1 billion orders per year and Twitter with over 330 million active users. These are companies whose livelihoods really rely on the structured man management of data. Their BI is everything to them. So data by itself is quite lifeless. It doesn't communicate very much to very lots of people. The BI is about bringing your data to life and using it to tell a story so that everyone is able to understand. The importance of BI is supported by the fact that the average human brain processes visuals 60,000 times faster than text. So simply amassing data is not helpful at all. As Marco pointed out at the beginning of this webinar, too much data can become overwhelming. So you must find the story it tells in order to inform and provide people with actionable information. Effective business dashboards should be relevant, real-time and accessible. Their purpose is to create digestible chunks of useful information. Dashboards and data visualization tools specifically improve the user experience, but the tools and processes of BI that bring you to the point of making informed decisions are absolutely critical. Without data, BI could not exist. And without effective way of managing the data, data BI could also not exist. These two depend on each other. So let's say you have a collection of data that we want to extract valuable information from. We know what we want, but we don't know how to get there. So the processes and tools of BI allow you to collect various forms of data in a single location. Not only that, but you're able to organize said data so that it begins to make sense. Many BI platforms today make use of the data model approach, which allows you to link to your data without the restriction of how much data you're allowed to have. This also means that your data is protected in an environment that you're all, always able to access. So picture the arranged block of dots as your newly formed data model. Once you've collected all of the data in one centralized location, you're able to further organize it to have it structured so that it makes sense extracting information from your data so that it's even easier to do that than it originally has been. This is often a process that's executed only once. From then on, all the new data is subjected to the exact same organization when entering the data model. So databases can become massive. Earlier I mentioned Amazon and Twitter with the millions and millions, if not billions, of data entries to manage. Amazon with tracking orders and Twitter with managing its users. So BI involves forming relationships within your data, making the management of your data that much easier. These relationships create a form of an ERD, an entity relationship diagram. So these types of tools allows the user to understand how the data interconnect with each other and allows for the collective analysis of the data, say through an ID location. So BI is not necessarily knowing how to set up the dashboard, but also how to use the dashboard so it can communicate a message effectively to almost anyone that looks at it. So to summarize, business intelligence is getting relevant and reliable information to the right people at the right time with the goal of achieving better decisions faster. So how do we at SET achieve this and deliver best values to our clients? We use Simeo to get this relevant and reliable results from our simulations. Communicating this to the right people is where it becomes interesting. And I will leave that up to Nick. 
Great. So thank you very much, Hilda. Um, we've gotten a great um, look at now what business intelligence is all about. So let's look a bit into how Power BI, Power BI actually is operating. So um, in the next slide, I'll just give a brief overview of what Power BI actually is and how it operates. So just to clarify, Power BI is a Microsoft product. Um, it's an application which allows you to connect and to visualize any data in a unified, scalable platform for self-service for self-service and enterprise business intelligence. Or to put it in a simple terms, this means that it's easy to use and it helps you gain a deeper insight into the data that you've received. Gartner, one of the biggest global research and advisory firms, recognizes Microsoft as a leader for the 13th consecutive year in the Gartner Magic Quadrant for analytics and business intelligence platforms. We find that quite impressive. However, after using it for a few years, we can now see why Power BI is rated that high. So now that you know a little bit more about SET, business intelligence, as well as Power BI, we're gonna then move on to a bit more. In the beginning, SET started out using standard spreadsheets like the one you saw in the beginning to convey our outputs from Simeo. But our clients, as well as us, always wanted more, and we found that we've become that we've come a long way in our ability to communicate project results. But enough rambling from me. Nick will now demonstrate a use case that will explain the refined approach that SET uses to get from a problem to the most ideal solution for its clients using both Simeo and Power BI. All right, thanks, Marco. Um, all right, everyone. So as Marco mentioned, for the next few minutes, I'm going to reveal a, a bit more into the combined use of Simeo and Power BI in getting from a problem to a specific solution. All right, to explain that process, I'm gonna use a very basic example that all of us are very accustomed with, a type of queuing system. We've all at some point or other had the time consuming experience of having to queue, whether it be at the store, the bank, in traffic, or wherever. Needless to say, it's a frustrating experience. Normally we associate queuing with a bad, with bad service, but there's so much more to it than that. Looking specifically at a store type of environment, queuing can arrive because of variable customer patterns, such as peak traffic during the late afternoon rush without shopping for milk and bread, poor customer processing times, or simply just an insufficient number of tellers to handle that customer traffic. It can also be due to a combination of these reasons as well. All right, each of these reasons that can result in queuing, however, quantify exactly, exactly which one of these reasons the primary queuing influencer for a given system is not so much, so much of an easy task, which brings us to the problem, identifying exactly which of those reasons has the greatest influence on our system. In front of you, you see a, high, a very high level approach of how we approach a problem to get us to, to our solution. Focusing on the generation of the results that allow us to analyze our system. In model, in, in Simeo, we de developed a very basic source server sync type of model, all right, that allows us just to analyze simple queuing principles. We then subjected that model to variables such as processing times and the number of tellers. From Simeo, we use its very own custom write step to generate all our CSVs. These CSV documents all contain all of our write-outs for that specific model. To jump the gun a little, the write step that Simeo offers is the key link between Simeo and Power BI in our problem resolution process. All right, so what you saw now is the generation of results for a single scenario. The concept of replications is very important. Replications are what we use to run, we run multiple replications for each scenario. What a replication does for us is allow us to increase our accuracy in terms of the results we're presenting. The reason why we run multiple replications is that our results may start to paint a different picture once we start running more replications. The reason why I'm mentioning replications is because every time we run an additional replication 
on top of a scenario, we're creating more, do more data to have to handle. So Simio allows you to run multiple replications for multiple scenarios at the same time, which means that once done, you will have a mass of data, which all needs to be organized, protected, and interpreted somewhere, which brings us to Power BI. Power BI allows you to link to a data source and build your data model based on the data in that source. Once having organized the data and formed the internal relationships within that data, you come to the point of building your very own custom dashboard. The dashboard you see in front of you is an actual fact the dashboard created from the sim simple source server sync model you saw no less than a minute ago. We were able to extract so much value relating to cost, seller utilization, queuing times, the probability of a particular number of customers in the queue, and I could go on. But what I'm trying to say is that you are not restricted in terms of what you can have Simio write out and Power BI analyzed. Using Simio to generate results and Power BI to analyze those, analyze those results, we are able to arrive and at an appropriate solution. All right, having briefly introduced you to the process that SET follows to get its clients from a problem to a solution, it becomes appropriate to show you exactly how we do this on a grand scale. To do this, we're gonna take a closer look at one of the actual models that SET has developed for one of its projects. Now, what you saw earlier was a very simple model. What I've got here in front of you now is one of the larger scaled models that we've built. It's that of a processing plant. Many of the projects we take on are bottleneck related in the sense that we are tasked with finding a single bottleneck within a system and then also responsible for the suggestion of appropriate methods for alleviating that bottleneck. The model I'm introducing you to is a processing plant. A primary objective of this study was identifying the single bottleneck in the entire system of components. To give you an idea of scale, the plant in question contains over 130 components. That's 130 objects within the model. Each of those components are modeled within their own individual set of operating parameters and influence each other as they would in the real world system. Now you can imagine that identifying a single body bottleneck means recording the performance of each individual component for every replication, for every scenario, for the entire duration of the model run. In numerical terms, 130 components equates to 130 rows of data at each interval. An hourly interval over a year equates to 1.14 million rows of data for a single replication of a single scenario. Assuming 10 replications over 10 scenarios, we come to 114 million rows of data that we need to manage and be able to interpret. Once running a model, we typically get a number of different CSV files. Each of those CSV files within them, they're effectively looking like this. It looks very similar to the video you saw earlier on one of the earlier slides that just contains mountains and mountains of data, but doesn't communicate anything useful at all at this point. And that's where Power BI comes in. So welcome to Power BI. Power BI allows you, the user, to link millions and millions of rows of data, which is not the case for traditional Excel. Power BI allows us to set up visuals that help us identify the system bottleneck via its drag and drop, simple drag and drop functionality. To further present a message, conditional formatting is also really easy in Power BI. Note these slices at the top of the page. These allow us to analyze results of a particular scenario, component type, type of component for that matter. Pay particular attention to the replication slicer. We're able to run a number of replications and not just analyze the data or results for each replication separately, but rather have all our results represented over all of our replications. This gives us a much more accurate and appropriate view of how our system is performing. The scenario slicer allows us to filter our results for a particular scenario. Notice how all the visuals are concurrently updating each time I select a new scenario.
All right. The initial Power BI sheet that I showed you had only one sheet in it because it was representing such a simple model. The model I've shown you obviously is of a much grander scale and therefore we require a lot more in terms of analysis. So there are multiple sheets that we use to actually analyze that system. Note how the filters that we have at the top of the page update across the sheets as well. So you can actually analyze, ensure that you're analyzing consistent results throughout your dashboard. Getting back to the bottlenecks analysis, we at SET have come up with custom graphics and custom calculations that allow us to identify a single bottlenecking component in an entire plant for an entire set of data. This graphic called the stress index graphic allows us to do just that. The leftmost com component using conditional formatting is highlighted in complete red, which is indicating to us that that component is the bottleneck of the plant that I've showed you. The utilization in the graphic in the bottom right hand corner allows us to view the utilization of different components or different objects over time as well. Give us an indication as to what might be the bottleneck of a system. Cards are a very simple functionality, although if we look into other types of BI platforms, they're actually fairly complex to set up. Power BI offers you the ability to set these up in a matter of seconds. How it does that is by offering you a range of custom visuals that you're able to update with your own specific data. There are various types of different visuals for you to access. If you cannot, for whatever reason, find any of these visuals that you're looking for, Power BI links to the Microsoft online office where you're able to download any sort of custom visual that might relate specifically to your set of data. All right. If we get back to the presentation, to round off this small demo, why Simeo and Power BI suit each other so well is that once your model and dashboard are set up, running scenarios is but routine. But even easier is analyzing those new results because to view new, new results comes at literally the click of a button. There's a refresh button in Power BI that allows you to update your entire dashboard by one single click. It is elegant in, in its presentability, but the greatest advantage, in my opinion, is its ease of use. All right, having discussed exactly how Simeo and Power BI can relate to one another, it's fairly important that I now go about summarizing just the benefits that the combined package offer you when using them together. First off, relates to storage capacity. So Simeo allows a user to generate vast amounts of data relating to model performance. Power BI allows you to link to and protect that data without issue. When we're talking vast, we're talking millions and millions of rows of data, which is something that traditional Excel struggles to do that with restrictions on the amount of data and effort required to protect your data. No manual manipulation of data is required in Power BI. Power BI provides a drag and drop interface whereby you're able to simply in a matter of seconds, set up your entire and set up a visual in your dashboard to communicate results effectively. The rapid re reporting I'm referring to is that linking back to that refresh feature I spoke about. So once you've done the initial setup of your model and your Power BI dashboard, the two work together very efficiently in the sense that you're running scenarios and immediately after you've generated those results, you're able to view them in Power BI by the single click of a button. The communicable results advantage I'm referring to is the fact that it was mentioned earlier that people process visuals 60,000 times faster than text, which I can definitely relate to. Model validation is something that's very critical to any simulation model. All right. It's about the process of ensuring the validity of your model and representing reality. Now, Simio offers a great functionality in that you're able to view your model work. 
you can see how it's working and understand whether it's working correctly. But what Power BI does for you is it offers an additional avenue of validation. It allows you to statistically validate your model. So together, Power BI and Simeo allow you to visually and statistically validate your model, thereby ensuring your model accuracy that much more. When it comes to presentability, Power BI offers a substantial edge when it comes to the quality of the dashboard, which is why it makes it one of the preferred BI platform amongst the rest. Customizability is one of my favorite advantages. The ability to define your own visual types. There is a vast range available in Power BI and in the Microsoft Store. Build your own visuals visuals in R and Python. Simio has some built-in reporting features such as responses and experiments, a pivot grid and a box and whisker chart. But once again, these might not be so easily interpretable by someone who does not have an analytical background. Therefore, the need arose to find a way to effectively communicate the results of our hard work to our stakeholders. Lastly, and probably the most appealing, is the fact that both of these software offer a version that allows you to get up and running with the entire package. Simio and Power BI allow you to work with a free version of the software to get the ball rolling without incurring any cost. All right, so thank you very much, Nick. Um... Yeah, it's actually really great to see how Simeo and Power BI, they, they actually just work so well together. But there's actually just one more thing that we also want to highlight in this um, in this webinar. Um, so just before we jump to the, the Q&A, um, Nick and Hilda, if you just want to review some of the, the questions being published. And um, yeah, if anyone still has questions, you still more than welcome to put them in the um, in the Q&A section. But um, just uh, moving on, there's one thing that we also want to, to highlight um, into the next slide, is just to say that, yes, <laughs> we will also be offering training. So just to um, take note that um, if you feel like you or your, yourself, your company, or perhaps one of your clients um, will find Simeo as well as the use of Power BI useful, then SET actually offers world-class training for these um, two products. Um, what's nice about this training that we'd like to add is that you'll be getting some intimate virtual training where Nick will actually be interacting with you as well as your team to answer any questions that may come your way. It's also the first of its kind that we know of, I may be wrong here, but yeah, at this moment, no other company in the world is offering this kind of combination of Power BI and Simeo training put together. So take note that we don't train not only individuals, but small teams too. And we've actually trained over 500 people over the years of offering this training service. So you might be wondering, what does this training include? Well, just to give you a brief summary, and um, it's just very high level at the moment, is that we coming in from the Simeo side, we'll be teaching you how to write out data in Simeo, setting up various scenarios in Simeo, importing data into Power BI from various different sources, setting up Power BI in the data model through queries, forming relationships between data sets, as well as then building a or introduction into DAX, that very um, beloved um, language within Power BI. But then also in Power BI, we'll be, uh, uh, Nick will be showing you how to build a custom dashboard that comes with stock and custom visuals, conditional formatting of graphics, grouping results for multiple replications, data slicing and filters for visuals, sheets, and the entire dashboard. And there's a whole lot more, including tips and tricks and taking your modeling and visualization skills to the next level. So this is a complete one-day course, and it's going for only 399 US dollars. So that is a one-day course, but also note that uh, space is limited. So you might want to be booking early to save your or your team's spot. So yes, in conclusion, uh, we just like to say that we know Simeo and we know Power BI. 
and we'd like to share our knowledge with you to bring better insights and better decision making to your world. We'll now be answering some questions that um, we have, people have been posting onto the group. So Nick and Hilda, are you ready to fire some questions or answers your way? Yes, go for it, Marco. Um, so and, um, someone anonymous posted, uh, let me publish here, um, saying, um, yeah, so what do you mean by Power BI and Simeo are offered as free? So basically, it just comes down to the initial version. So Power BI offers a Power BI desktop, which is a free version of the software, which is what we use. Um, and Simeo offers a personal edition, which allows you to just get up and running um, with the software. Great. Um, yeah, so I do believe that there are quite a lot of features with the Power BI, the free version, which is quite nice. Um, Actually, at the moment, um, if if anyone's, what we'll definitely do is that we do have a version of that use case available. So if anyone's interested, we can send you a copy just to play around with that. Um, someone asked um, also um, Arun or Aaron. I'm not too sure how to say that correctly, um, but um, they asked, would you create the measures in Power BI or would you set the calculations in Simeo first? That absolutely depends, to be honest. So Power BI just offers us a bit of efficiency when it comes to setting up and managing um, data across replications. Uh, writing them out, writing specific results out in Simeo um, would relate to a specific set of data when it comes to a single replication. Whereas in Power BI, for example, if we're looking to group data, um, a measure basically allows us to do just that. And then we can report across multiple replications thereby ensuring that accuracy that I spoke about earlier. Awesome. Um, someone else has asked, how do I book the training? Um, so yeah, so yeah. on that one, we'll be sending out uh, a link um, when we conclude this webinar for people to, uh, to be able to book that. All right, great. Um, and then I got I got another question here uh, from Anonymous um, asking why we should we choose Power BI over Excel? Because I know quite a lot of people are, yeah, you know, I've, I've often asked myself that question. A lot of people are, um, uh, they use they use Excel and they they, they find comfort in that. But uh, Nick, why do you why do you think um, Excel might be better? I mean, uh, right. RBI, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so everyone, a lot of people over the years have become accustomed to and uh, sort of used to the functionalities of Excel. Um, it's been a product that's been around for a long, long time. The main thing is that Power BI links to a specific data source. It just has a link to that source. It's not necessarily storing all of that data within itself. It has a data model that links to an external source. So what that allows Power BI to do is manage a much, much larger data set than traditional Excel. Traditional Excel limits you to approximately just over a million rows of data, whereas, as I explained earlier, we can encounter situations where we're having 114 million rows of data. And obviously, Excel is just not going to be able to handle that. Power BI for us up until now has not a had a problem managing and allowing us to analyze that type that set of data. In terms of presentability, Power BI, in my opinion, wins hands down over Excel. Excel's got some great functionality in terms of exporting visuals, but Power BI, being a Microsoft tool, links very well with Excel. So that advantage is sort of nullified. In Power BI, you've got simple functionalities like conditional formatting and cards, and believe it or not, within Excel or traditional Excel, it's very difficult to actually get that done. So Power BI, for me, wins in terms of usability, but then also presentability. Awesome, that's really great to hear. Uh, Mauricio, he asked, do you use the Simeo results dashboards or do you always use Power BI? All right, so Conventionally, we always go with the Power BI dashboard. Um, it's just a matter of flexibility and what it offers in terms of presentability. Um, 
Power BI just has that extra functionality in, in terms of allowing us to set up measures and other types of calculated fields whereby we're able to communicate exactly what we want to try and say to our client. Within Simeo, because people aren't necessarily as familiar with the software, it's a little bit more difficult to com communicate specific types of analysis with our clients. And that's why we choose Power BI. Nice. Another anonymous question here. What are some of the specific benefits you get from Python scripts between Simeo outputs and Power BI? So it's a very simple, short answer to that question. Effectively, what it comes down to is if you're unable to find the exact visual that you're looking for within the Power BI or Microsoft Store and what Power BI offers by standard, you're able to actually go and set up your own visual within R or within um, Python and import it into Power BI to use as your very own custom visual. Yeah, I've actually seen that before where if, I mean, if you happily to use R or Python, then Power BI actually gives you the freedom to use those as you will. You don't have to stick with the conventional graphics, for instance. Yeah, if you've got the knowledge to, to, to code the types of custom visuals um, in R and in Python, then by all means, it's going to be a great advantage to you. 100%. Arun asks back again, he says, um, we currently to use both packages are there any best practices in Simeo to follow to work with the output to Simeo so some best practices in terms of a few tips and tricks um, so what you highlighted in the training uh, we will cover a lot of that in the specific training um, but it just comes down to a matter of standardization uh, so your ability to um, standardize your work the more you're able to standardize, the easier your work becomes. Great. Um, so, yeah, this is, uh, I'm just going to publish this question here. Um, other than highlighting bottlenecks, how can Power BI be used to visually indicate a simulated optimization result through OpQuest? So I think with that one, it's more in terms of how uh, Power BI can be used to, to indicate, say, bottlenecks. Well, well so, yeah, sorry, it's, yeah. I don't think we, that's a good question. I don't think we've used um, OptQuest um, with Power BI. You know, we've, we've run OptQuest in Sumia, obviously, um, to get an answer, but um, yeah, let's look into it. We can, we can share. Maybe share that um, with, with all the attendees. I think with, yeah. um, with OpQuest, it's about finding a, the sort of most optimal solution um, within Simeo. Whereas often, more often than not, the type of analysis we're doing is not necessarily to find um, an optimal combination of parameters, but more so to provide an overall analysis of an entire system, um, given different, uh, different values for different parameters. Great. And then um, ooh, another question here. Have you ever had a scenario where you had to extract the data first into Power BI for data standardization as input into Simeo and then again from Simeo into Power BI? So if I understand that correctly, um, I want to say yes, because what we've had to do is before we've generated results in Simeo is often conduct an analysis of the inputs that you feed into Simeo within Power BI. So that just allows us to also um, assess the integrity of the inputs going into our Simeo model. Because as we all know, having used Simeo at some point in, or another, when your inputs are rubbish, your outputs are also going to be rubbish. So Power BI just allows us to also then go and effectively validate the inputs that we're feeding into our model as well. Awesome. Um, another question here, I'm not sure if we'll be able to do this, uh, but he or she has asked, will we be demonstrating how to write out data from each replication? So maybe just explaining that. Yeah, so that's, that's exactly what we're going to cover in the training that you've mentioned, Marco. <laughs> great, that's great to hear. Um, all right, awesome. I don't see any more questions at the moment. Um, do take note that, yes, um, if you would like a recorded uh, version of this, we will be sending an email with a link 
to this whole event, as well as um, any questions and answers um, that have been covered in this Q&A section, as well as um, the Power BI uh, use case that we demonstrated earlier. So just from my side, I'd just like to wrap up to say thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Um, we do appreciate you for sticking through to the end. Um, and yeah, we'll definitely be hosting a lot more um, webinars in the, in the months to come to just basically help share our knowledge and um, understanding of both, um, uh, both Simeo as well as Power BI. I'd also like to thank um, our presenters uh, as well as Yaku for joining us and um, on the behalf of uh, Foresight as well as SET, I'd just like to say again, thanks very much. Thank you, thank you everyone for attending um, this webinar. Um, Nick Hilda, if there's anything else you'd like to add? Hope to see you in the training. <laughs> Great, yes. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope you have a great day. And if it's in the night or in the evening, hope you have a pleasant evening and hope everyone is staying safe during these tough times. Thank you very much, everyone. And we'll be seeing you shortly.